Sylvia Earle, marine biologist, said, It is the worst of time, but it is the best of time because we still have a chance. We gathered here to celebrate Earth Day and we will present before you an exhibition for the Plastic Turner Challenge. Earth Day is an annual event celebrated around the world on April 22nd to demonstrate support for environmental protection, first celebrated in 1970. India generates nearly 26,000 tons of plastic waste every day, making it the 15th biggest plastic polluter globally. Single-use plastic are primarily goods which are made to be used once. Single-use plastics are cheap, durable and affordable, but actually are a great threat to the environment. It is known that 300 million tons of plastics are produced each year worldwide, half of which counts for single-use items. Usage of single-use plastics include a wide array of our day-to-day -day items, ranging from water bottles, bags, straws, and many more. Single-use plastics slowly and gradually break down into microplastics, which are, which are even more harmful for our health and environment. India alone generates 9.46 million tons of plastic every year, out of which 43% comprises only of single-use plastic. Therefore, it is high time that we eliminate or at least minimize the use of this highly toxic and carcinogenic substance in order to save our Mother Earth and our health also. Say no to, say no to plastic. We at Tego International School, Vasant Vihar, are concerned about the state of the environment and want to leave a cleaner and less suffocating planet for the younger generation. Our school is also a no polybag zone. Neither students nor teacher carry polythene back to school. Students distributed paper bags to the vendors and shopkeepers of the C Block Market, Vasant Vihar, to raise awareness about plastic pollution and to avoid single use plastic. In our school canteen, plastic crockery is banned. Children carry their own tiffins, and the cafeteria serves them with banana leaf and wooden spoons. When we think about plastic pollution in the ocean, we tend to imagine large plastic debris like plastic bags, abundant fishing, fishing net, plastic bottles. However, what is invisible to our eyes tend to also be invisible in our minds. There is very little awareness of microplastic pollution. Today, we shall exhibit few products and explain how microplastics are choking us and our environment. So now I would like Gurman to start his presentation. Okay. So my presentation is about deoxfolians. Now what deoxfolians are is basically a simple face wash. Now even though it might not look like it, these face washes actually contain microplastic beads that are about half the size of a micrometer. Something really small that we do not see and thus we do not think there is plastic in these deoxfolians. However, it is present in either microplastic beads or plastic fibers. Now why is plastic needed in face washes? This plastic pushes out the pimples and acne that you have and thus heals your skin. Now why is this dangerous? This can be really dangerous for your skin simply because when they push them out, they enter your skin. Usually they'll be flown off when you wash your face with water. However, sometimes that does not happen and the plastic stays inside your skin and can damage your skin very much. The worst thing is that when this plastic gets flown off, it enters through the sink into the underground water, which you will probably drink later in your life. This is why use of face wash needs to be minimized or needs to be uh, replaced with something better, something alternate. And that is simple natural herbs. Coffee and sugar grounds can be easily used as physical exfoliants for your skin. While citrus fruits such as a simple orange can be used as a chemical exfoliant. Even a simple hot wet cloth can be used to slow off some dead skin. Now, I would like to pass on to the exhibit of Devshita Chaudhary. My product is synthetic polyester cloth. My message is, choose natural clothing fibers over synthetic fibers. Synthetic fabrics are made of plastic as they are washed as shit plastics. A report from the National Center of Ecological Analysis and Synthesis in Santa Barbara, California on the Earth Island report states that every time a synthetic garment goes through the spin and rinse cycle in a washing machine, it sheds a large number of plastic fibers. In another report published in Environmental Science and Technology, is stating 
that one single synthetic garment can produce more than 1,900 microfibers per wash. This microplastic seeps in the groundwater and thus pollutes our drinking water and kills a lot of aquatic animals. So, instead of synthetic fabrics, we should use clothes made up of hemp, hem, rayon which is made up of bamboo, linen and organic cotton. Now, I would like to show a video on microplastics. That's what Polly thinks when you hear the word pop. What do you think when you hear the word polyester? 70s leisure suits? Sweaty smelling dress shirts? That's what polyester used to be. These days, everybody wears it. Yoga pants, fleeces, even underwear. All made from synthetic fabrics like polyester. More polyester means more demand for the stuff used to make polyester. But you don't have to use new stuff to make it. Some companies are making polyester out of old stuff. Plastic bottles, in fact. Every day, the world throws away billions and billions of plastic bottles. That's a problem. Of course, the real solution is that we all use less plastic. But it's cool that even while we work to reduce plastic, some companies are turning trash into stuff we actually like. Drink it, drop it in the bin, take it to a recycling factory, chop it up, weave it, wear it, wash it, wear it again, wash it again. Seems like a great solution, right? But darn, when we look closer, there are some real problems with this. The big problem is that some people might be encouraged to use more disposable plastic if they think it's being recycled safely. But there's also a little problem, a micro problem that's adding up to one big mess. Every time we wash synthetic fabrics, whether they're made from recycled bottles or brand new materials, super tiny pieces of plastic called microfibers wash off and flow down the drain. Up to hundreds of thousands each wash. The older our clothes get, the worse the problem can become. Yikes! These fibers are so tiny, water treatment plants don't catch them all, so they wind up in rivers, lakes, and even the ocean. When they reach the ocean, they act like sponges, sucking up other pollutants around them. They're like little toxic bombs full of motor oil, pesticides, and industrial chemicals that end up in the bellies of fish, and eventually in the bellies of us. It's gross. It's already estimated there are 1.4 million trillion in our oceans. That's like 200 million microfibers for every person on the planet. These are some serious downsides to what looked like a good solution. Time for these creative companies to go back to the drawing board. Because while we can wash our clothes less or avoid buying synthetic clothing, we can't solve the problem without them. And if we want these companies to make it a top priority, they need to hear from you. Let's find a real solution to make our clothes safe for the environment, safe for the ocean, and safe for us. Uh, and now I would like to pass on the mic to the next exhibitor, Snigdha Goyal. Good evening everyone, my name is Snigdha Goyal and I'm from class 10C. So today I'll be talking about chewing gum. So chewing gum is a very common thing, but the surprising element about this is the chewing gum contains plastic. Now I'm going to present something. Okay, so as I told you that chewing gum contains plastic. So chewing gum is not a new invention, but it was in fact 6,000 year old, complete with teeth imprints, it was discovered in Finland. Earlier, chewing gums were made from substances derived from plants, grasses or resins. But now, in the modern time, chewing gum contains plastic. Modern chewing gum is non-digestible and water insoluble, which means that no matter how long you keep chewing it, it will never break down. This is because of the gum base. Gum base is a non-nutritive, non-digestible and water insoluble masticatory delivery system used to carry sweeteners, flavors and any other substances in chewing gum. Substances like polyethylene, which is one of the most popular components of gum base, belongs to a group of plastics which is used in the products from plastic bags to hula hoops. Polyvinyl acetate, which is used in gum base, is a sticky polymer found in a white glue. So, to avoid this chewing gum, there is a company known as Simply Gum which makes chewing gum and breath mints using natural ingredients. So this can be used as an alternative. These are made in USA and manufactured in Brooklyn, New York. 
there's also a way to recycle it. A British designer, Anna Bullis, created a method of collecting and recycling the chewing gum into plastic. Some of the objects made of that plastic are collection containers for more chewing gum, shoe soles, rubber boots, and plastic cups. As you can see in this picture, how plastic is used in the shoe soles and how the containers are made, the plastic cups and the rubber boots. So when you dispose the uh, chewing gum, after two or three days, you will notice that it will get hardened. And it is supposed to buy, de uh, buy, it is supposed to be a biodegradable item, but it is not. So that means it contains plastic. Thank you. I would like to pass on to the our next exhibitor, Pratyush. Today, I am going to be talking about the next household item that contains plastic. Glitter. Glitter is made out of a combination of aluminium, mica and plastic. In most cases, poly, polyethylene terephthalate. Its size is around 0.05 to 6.35 millimeter. Due to their tiny size, they are considered as microbeads or microplastics. Glitter plastic accounts for 92.4% of the 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic in the ocean. Because glitter is so small, marine life is mistaking it for food, which in turn is damaging their liver and affecting their behavior functions. The US and the United Kingdom have outlawed cosmetics and care products containing glitter. The makeup industry claims the most pollution level among the total amount of glitter used. In 2018, 61 British music festivals banned attendees from wearing glitter. Nowadays, companies like Lush Cosmetics have replaced normal glitter with the bio biodegradable one made from eucalyptus extract or synthetic mica. Thank you. Now I will I would like to pass on to the next exhibitor, Rehana Huta. Yes. Yeah. So today I'll be talking about one household item which is really unexpected to have some plastic, which is a non-stick pan. Now nobody would have thought that a non-stick pan would have something as deadly as plastic. So a non-stick surface is a surface engineered to reduce the ability of other materials to stick to it. Non-stick cookware is a common application where the non-stick coating allows food to brown without sticking to the pan. Non-stick is often used to refer to surfaces coated with polytetrafluoroethylene PTFE, a well-known brand of which is Teflon. In the 21st century, other coatings have been marketed as non-stick, such as anodized aluminium, ceramics, silicon, enameled cast iron and seasoned cookware. Now the question arises that do these plastic pans, the plastic coated or non-stick pans cause cancer? Well, that's a common concern. But if you can see these white colored beads, these white colored beads which are present on the pan, these white colored beads are basically beads of plastic. Now, if you use this, be uh, if you use this pan, like a 10 times or 20 times, if you observe carefully, the white beads may seem to decrease. This is because per serving, these white beads are beads of plastic, which keep on absorbing to the food we consume. Which means per serving, we are consuming about 0.1 gram of plastic on each serving, which you're cooking in this nonstick pan. I am totally against the use of such pans as the plastic is a danger is a common danger to wildlife as well as the environment so i do not promote the use of such plastics thank you so much i would like to pass on to the next exhibitor which is garv gupta good evening everyone my name is garv gupta from class 10c and i am exhibiting on the topics balloons and plastic bottles balloons which are normally made from latex have also uh, certain amounts of plasticizers and chemicals such as ammonia and zinc oxide inside them. These uh, plasticizers and chemicals can enter the human body when they try 
when we try to blow them from our mouth and they can also pollute the environment if left untreated also some animals may mistake these balloons as food and try to ingest them which can ultimately kill those animals small animals insects or fishes can also be uh, get trapped inside these if they are left uh, freely in the environment some balloons are also made of mylar which have a metallic coating uh, on them that can cause electrical problems when they come in contact with wires or power houses also uh, the chemical coating uh, metallic coating can be harmful to the environment if left untreated the second topic which is plastic bottles even though uh, uh, they are made, made of pet which can be recycled and used again they contain antimony trioxide which is considered a carcinogen capable of causing cancer in living tissue so if there is a liquid stored in these bottles the longer the liquid is left inside the greater potential uh, there will be potential for release of the antimony trioxide which can easily cause cancer in human tissues now i would like to pass on to our last exhibitor ayushi das gupta being the last speaker of the exhibition i would like to trigger your thoughts little of your thoughts about my information on tea bags as you all are aware that tea is an aromatic beverage consumed by millions around the world several people all over the world prefer drinking tea on a regular basis among millions of tea drinkers 90% of them prefer using tea bags starting from a morning bed tea to office meetings conferences etc tea is an essential commodity but what do we really know about tea bags this tea bag uh, according to us is just a small sealed bag containing tea leaves but the fact that we don't know is that a single tea bag can shed billions of particles of micro uh, microplastic and nanoplastic in a single cup of tea which is significantly higher than the estimated amount of microplastic consumed by a person in an entire year but further research and tests it has, it has also been found that steeping a tea bag at a brewing temperature of 95 degrees celsius releases around 11.6 billion microplastic and 3.1 billion nanoplastic particles also there are such reports that there are many such reports on the public domain that supports the argument that tea bags leave plastic residue after being composted a question now that comes to our mind is that why do we need tea bags in uh, why do we need plastic in tea bags plastic is used in tea bags to basically seal them and retain their shape in hot liquid in order to do this a plastic polymer named the polypropylene is added to tea bags due to which tea bags cannot be decomposed completely and hence make them a bad option for the environment so if not tea bags what could be alternative the best option is to use tea loose leaf loose tea leaves loose tea leaves usually come in easy to store tins or eco friendly packages also loose tea leaves not only reduces a plastic footprint but it can also be cost effective as it could be reused for making more than one cup of tea so in the end i would just like to say that to stay healthy and to reduce our plastic footprint we should try stop uh, try to stop using tea bags in the modern world plastic is everywhere durable lightweight and cheap to make it is used in almost all the single use items and while it is easy to spot plastic in most of the items it is used it is very difficult to find plastic as a hidden material unseen from the naked eye there are microplastic fibers all around us and as we have learned from the exhibitors about the dangerous and harmful effects of plastic let us pledge on the occasion of earth day that we will minimize the use of plastic and completely do away with the use of single use plastics thank you